Well, good morning, guys. Let's take a look at the katana today. I do like the black. Thank you, Shriver, for letting me take this out today. They have a whole slew of bikes that you can take out. Of course, the Japanese 4, the Piaggio Group, Motoguzzi, Aprilia, Husqvarna, um, and pff, Triumph down there. But let's take a look, a real close-up of this beautiful bike. I, I didn't like, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't like the pictures of this, but I, in person, I do like the looks in person. This tribute back to the original from the 1980s. I didn't think I liked it at first, especially with this headlight, but now, in person, it looks much better. All right, well, let's quit talking about it. Let's get on her and ride her and see how she feels, shall we, guys? All right, let's go. Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, because any day one can be out on two wheels is a beautiful day. And as you can see, yes, I am on the beautiful, depending on who's you're talking to, Suzuki Katana. I finally get a chance to, to ride it. The all new for 2019 or 2020, depending on which country you're from uh, and when the bike got into your country. Um, but I'm finally getting a chance to ride this bad boy. And I say bad boy because I don't know what it is yet. It's got kind of an attitude, I think. Um, love it or hate it, if you guys have not seen this bike in person, do not draw conclusions, do not draw judgments until you see this in person. Because the pictures do not do it justice. I know we say that a lot, but this bike, it's really true. I did not like this bike from afar when I saw it way far off in the dealership and I didn't like the pictures that I saw online until I got up close and now I'm starting to appreciate the design cues from the original 1000 or 1100 back in 1981. Uh, I'll show some pictures of that up there. And so that's what they're really drawing from and this is a natural evolution if this bike had stayed in production the whole time as to what it would look like um, today. And they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Give it a shot, guys. Go look at it first before you judge it. Um, now, I, now that I see it, I, I really like the black that you see here. Uh, this black is really, really nice. And this headlight that you see there from the 1980s, that just screams 80s. <laughs> Although it's not square totally anymore. It's kind of like this uh, hex uh, headlight. Um, as you can tell, guys, I'm, I've kind of split as to do I like this or not. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm warming up to it. Uh, I didn't at first. Now I like the looks even more and more. But let's go ahead and let's go ahead and jump right into the the numbers of this bike as a little scooter goes by. Now what's what are the numbers to this? 150 and 108. 150 at 10 grand. 108 newton meters of torque. Right at 9,500 RPMs. And What's so important about that? 9,500 RPMs, right at 3,500 RPMs, you have 81 Newton meters of torque. That's what's important, and that's where this stroked motor, this longer stroke, and that's why Suzuki chose to put this motor in this to make this more streetable. And I can tell it really is. It's nice. It came on right there at just below 35, right? Just over 3,000, it started to come on. You could really feel the torque, it's nice. Made it to this cassette style transmission. How does this feel on the street? So how is this powertrain? I am enjoying this low down torque. Right at three grand, that's all you gotta do. Well, actually I'm at 2,500 here. And uh, 
I'm enjoying this torque. This is really good torque. Down low usable torque. So now I know why Suzuki put this motor in this katana. Very good. And the house shifts are just a piece of cake, really. Oh yeah. Loving that torque. Uh, this bike going slow is not so much fun but going fast this bike is fun and uh, so together with this download torque and this roll on all you got to do is just leave it in fifth or sixth all the time and, and it just torques out no problems whatsoever so with this uh, cassette style transmission it's getting two thumbs up for me boom boom suzuki for this powertrain all right guys now let's go ahead and get into these kybs the suspension fully adjustable there and over there and yes i said fully adjusted adjustable for preload i like that because i would lighten up the preload on these just a hair and what's attached to them, yeah, Brembo's four piston floaters on a 310 mil disc. And fully adjustable brake lever there. No complaints so far with the Brembo's, we'll see in a minute. And on the rear, single piston this one on a 250. Uh, the rear feel was okay. But now how does this suspension, and the rear is, is preload and only uh, rebound adjustable only, but how does it feel on the street? Let's take a look. So how is this suspension working with these brakes attached to this frame? Uh, I think I would loosen up the, the preload on the front and back. This must have been set up for a little bit heavier guy than me. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the KYBs are doing a good job, no complaints, very little dive, that's what I'm talking about, there's almost none there. Uh, and you just saw me apply the front brake there. So here in a corner, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, and see, I, I dropped her down to 40 and just left it in fifth gear and it just rolls out. Now, let, now let's do the same thing, let's bring her all the way down, to, how's the rear brake? Oh uh, yeah, look at that, and, and I'm in fifth gear, and this is ah, no problem, I can torque out of this. So this suspension is very uh, well sorted, for lack of a better word, solid. Uh, you can do a track day on this, guys. I, I, I didn't think one would want to with 215 kilos. Uh, but yes, you can have some fun on the track with this, no problem. I, I am very surprised I'm saying that. I didn't think I would say that, but I am. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so overall, with this suspension, the Brembo's on the front and the Nissan's on the rear, uh, good feel, good feedback with that rear. There's no complaints. So that's one place Suzuki didn't skimp is the brakes and the suspension on here with these KYBs. And by the way, KYB is I think the number one supplier of suspension forks, shocks in the world. And they're that way for a reason. They're pretty good. I, I, if you want to dial them in more on a track then, yeah. but for the street, eh, they're excellent for the street. And on this rougher road, yeah, not bad. It's a little stiff for my taste, but I would, I would loosen up the preload with just a hair. So overall, two thumbs way, way up for the chassis. Good job. All right, guys, now let's continue on with the rest of this machine. Coming back here, take a look at this tail. Um, I've seen comments online, you either love it or hate it. Uh, I'm kind of indifferent. <laughs> I do like how they've moved it down here. 
this is that was a nice touch there Suzuki coming up to the 825 millimeter off the ground seat nice and wide and then it, but then it cuts in real sharp here and here so that you can get your legs down so that's nice nice touch there Suzuki thank you this is one of the more comfortable seats on a naked bike I would I would say now problem yeah only 12 liters in this tank and that's not very much on a liter bike to be quite honest with you guys so although you're not going to be doing trips with this bike very much at least I wouldn't think you would uh, now how much does this bad boy weigh 215 kilos well, wait, but how does that feel in the city? So how is this bike in town? Well, the in-town manners, uh, to be honest, this, this throttle, uh, this cable throttle, not wide by, ride by wire, is a little snatchy at low speeds, just a little bit, but uh, you can rectify that just by leaving it in a higher gear. <laughs> and it doesn't mind then it's not so bad but uh, overall hello for this being a cable throttle and also a cable clutch hmm, it is a little bit more pull than a hydraulic that's for sure no if ands buts are about that guys uh but uh yeah let's do a roundabout here see it just lifted in second yeah it did fine but uh as far as its weight other than the throttle the weight and the handling and the suspension is a little abrupt uh but are you it will on any naked leader bike I didn't say standard. Now standard, if this was considered a standard bike, uh, then I might criticize the suspension as being a little too stiff, but it's not. So, overall in town, yeah, I'll give it a thumb and a half. That, this throttle, yeah, I almost said it, almost said throttle mapping. <laughs> it doesn't have throttle mapping. It's just a cable. <laughs> All right, guys, now let's get up here to the handlebar controls here. Let's take a look. Standard controls, here's your modes where you can control your, your, your uh, traction control and your ABS. Uh, standard controls over here. And um, before we get into the display, what do you notice here? Yeah, it's a cable clutch. And also, look at this, Suzuki's dual system for their cable throttle. So it's not ride-by-wire. This is 2020. Well, when it came out last year, 2019. And it's not hydraulic clutch. Yes, I noticed that right away. I stalled this bike three times on my way out here. Me, I stalled the bike three times. I don't know if it's me and I'm having, having a bad day, but I never stall a bike. It's okay, never. Rarely do I stall a bike. And on this, I did it three times before I even got to this point. So I don't know if that's, and, and the, the clutch has a really early grab in the first 10, 15%. It starts to really grab. Whereas normally it's later, it's 70, 80, or 90%. It's the engagement. This is starting really to grab a 15, and by 20%, it's... And I, I just couldn't get used to that. That was interesting. Um, this display. Yeah, it's the old J-style RPM, but... It definitely looks like something out of the 80s. I... Hmm. Uh, from Tron, the movie Tron, I would say that this is what this looks like. Um, yeah, you guys can tell I have mixed feelings about this bike. It's growing on me, um, and it seems like Suzuki 
didn't know, well, should we fully evolve this, for example, like the CB1000R, the Neo Sports Cafe Honda? Should we totally evolve it? Uh, or shall we leave it like the Z900 RS? Or the CB1100 uh, EX or ST or whatever it's called, I'll put that up. Um, those, they left the old way Honda and Kawasaki. Should you have Suzuki left it like that or should you have updated it like the CB1000R Neo Sports Cafe? Because this is somewhere in the middle of those three examples. It seems like there was a struggle within Suzuki uh, to what to do with this. And you see it here. Keep it more towards the 80s retro or bring it up to the date like a Neo Sports Cafe bike, like the Honda. Um, it's a dilemma that I can see in certain aspects and certain pieces of this. And this tank with only 12 liters, yeah, they had to sculpt in this new tank, so they sacrificed a fuel tank size. I, like that, for example, I don't think you should have done that. that that's just me. Um, how would this bike compare, performance-wise, to those three bikes that I just listed? Well, I, ha I've, I haven't ridden the Honda CB1100 yet, but I have ridden the Z900 RS, and I have ridden the Honda CB1000R. I would say on a performance level, it's somewhere in between those two. The Honda has more performance than this, so I'll just be honest. Uh, the Honda is performing more like a Super Naked. Still not quite there at the level of a Super Naked, but close enough. This is just shy of the Super Naked category, so I would not actually put this in the Super Naked group. It's more of just a leader bike, naked bike, without putting it into the Super Naked. Whereas the Kawasaki Z900 RS, no, that's retro. That's there, uh, and its performance shows the suit. This will outperform that in a corner, braking, suspension, everything. So you guys can see, I'm, I'm trying to find where this Katana fits in this market. Uh, and it's very unique. And maybe that's what Suzuki was going for. And if that is what you were going for, Suzuki, you've hit the mark. This is a unique bike. You won't get any discussion from me on that. I agree 100%, this is unique. There is really nothing else out there like it. Um, all right, guys, enough rambling on. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. As always, guys, number one, ride safe. That's the most important thing, ride safe. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove, guys. Take care. Cheers. Some of you guys might ask, what about the wind protection? There isn't any. <laughs> Zero, nine, no. <laughs>